What's going on, Jay Pan? Not much, you know, chilling. What's going on with you? You know, to be honest with you, I have a lot of things on my mind. Something in particular that is like really irking me. I might have to tweet about it, Facebook yeah. about it, something. I might get a couple feathers ruffled. I don't know. I might get canceled. I don't know. But it needs to be said. Well, yeah, you're going to be running the risk of getting canceled. And I can't be associated with that because cancel culture is a real thing. And I want to make sure that I'm part of the right side of the conversation. So, what we need to talk about cancel culture, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it because y'all be mad at a lot of people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> guys, welcome to another episode of season three of LeMay Day Limelight. I am your hostess with the most is Sharique LeMay and we have my co-host. J-Pen, you know what it is. You already know what it is. And yeah, so let's just jump right into it. Cancel culture. Listen, I oh, before we get into it, because okay. you know, I, I have some things to say about cancel culture and I think it's very prevalent in social media. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, let's be thankful that we haven't been caught up in any cancel culture. And with Thanksgiving, I just want to say that I'm thankful for that. Yes. <laughs> the holidays are coming. 22 is very, very near. 22, 22. 2020. 2020. 22. 2020. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. Okay. Well, we're entering a new decade. Mm -hmm. With that being said, 2019 has been a crazy one yeah. for the books. Yeah. And yeah, I'm thankful we haven't gotten canceled yet. But I think we've been pretty, you know, PC. Yeah, I, we've been PC and I think I think we've done a good job at um, stating our opinion mm -hmm. uh, from a, an objective point of view. Yes. Um, and so hopefully we're just, uh, we are teaching and we aren't throwing our opinions at <laughs> people's faces. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. yes definitely. So yeah. I what mean, are you thankful for? I'm thankful for, I mean, I'm thankful that it's about to be 2020 because I think 2020 is, is just the number. I'm it's really the year of vision. It's yeah. the year of vision. 2020 vision is a new decade. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things are going to be happening and I'm just curious to see what the new year is going to bring. I mean, yeah. well, I'm just thankful for our show, I'm thankful for our vision perspective mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for the viewers that we have. Yes. So yes. So happy holidays. All right, enough of that. Let's get to what we really came to talk about. Yeah. Cancel culture. Yeah. So people define cancel culture as um let's say someone has said something that was offensive to mm -hmm. a specific group, usually a marginalized group. Yes. Or they sided with someone on a political stance mm -hmm. that would make would deem them inauthentic. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is it's like, oh no, I don't like someone so for this, this, and this reason, we're gonna cancel them. And then a lot of people jump on, I don't wanna call it a bandwagon, but jump on that movement and decide, oh yeah, they're totally canceled. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, it's everyone's throwing stones mm -hmm. at said canceled person. Now, I will admit that a lot of people do deserve yeah, some cancellation. <clears throat> but what I really want to get to the bottom is, at what point is there a point of redemption, if there is any? Mm -hmm. And at what point do we realize that some, what's going on with us internally that we get, we're allowed to be angry, we're allowed to be raged at things, but yeah. you know, where, where do we forgive someone? At what point do we allow that to become a teaching moment? A teaching moment rather than just canceling them and ruining mm -hmm. their career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It depends on how repetitive yeah. I think yep. their, their actions are. So Absolutely. let's just jump into it. Yep. Uh, Gina Rodriguez. Yep. She, my homegirl. Jane the Virgin. That's Michelle. Uh -huh. In my book, to a certain degree, she is canceled. Oh yeah, I, she she's definitely canceled. Yeah. And but it's not just because of one singular. It's been multiple thing that she's done. Multiple things. Yes, you know? and it's sad because I do think she's a talented woman. I love Jane the Virgin. Yeah, like, I thought absolutely. that was such a great show. I thought it was written well, um, and I was a fan of hers. I love seeing another Latinx person mm -hmm. in the media, um, just doing a really fun show. And then uh, when the thing came out with her and Yara, and then. Um, the Snapchat, the Snapchat thing, and then the most recent thing when she puts when she said the lyric from the Fuji song, I'm just like, Gee, the, like girl, bleep me out, <laughs> girl. Like it's just kind of girl. like you get disappointed because it's like you want you want to see certain people in the media exceed and and you know do great things, but right. I, I just it's what were you did you have no sense? 
I'm she know she knows better, but but I think her issue is is she, there's a certain level with certain artists that get too comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think they get too comfortable. Yeah. And I think they're you know she's a part of her career and she's always surrounded by these amazing you know black actors and actresses. I mean the, the movie on Netflix did you see it with Lakeith Stanfield? I forget. Oh, the break the one yes, the yes. I did see it, and I loved it. And it was really good. And then Gosh, she was, you know, she was doing her little. Was it Dewanda Wiseman? That was her friend. I mean, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. definitely. Yes. Miss she's got to have it. So I mean, and that's like she's a comedian goddess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keys for the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was like the most recent thing that I've seen of hers, and I loved it. I thought she did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. She was in there rapping Lizzo. I was feeling it. Yeah. But then when it comes to this whole Yara Shahidi thing, and, and to be honest, that's the thing that really bothered me the most, mm -hmm. more so than her saying the N word. We'll touch on that later because mm -hmm. I have a whole other thought about that. Yeah. But you know, as far as her trying to diminish you know, the struggles of another people. I get, you know, she's a Latina woman. She, she has her own struggles, but you cannot diminish mm -hmm. or try to out speak on that topic when it comes to another woman of another culture struggle. Absolutely. That's just not okay. Absolutely. And she, she, she yeah. should know better. And I think what's me, I as a Latinx person, it's kind of like, you have to look at something if there's any little bit of something, particularly a word, mm -hmm. that is rooted in oppression to another group that has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's me as a Latinx person and I, I work very closely in a lot of black spaces, mm -hmm. uh, black professional spaces. And quite frankly, I don't have the authority. Mm -hmm. to use that word mm -hmm. casually or whoever says oh but you could you pop no 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 if any one person feels oppressed by something that obviously culturally has had some historic weight to that yeah. then like can we just yeah not? there's certain things i'm not gonna say you yeah. know and i'm you know whether it's regarding the lgbtq community or, or even like there's certain things i'm just not gonna say mm -hmm. just out of respect mm -hmm. um that I, ne I didn't necessarily cancel her in my mind for that alone. Mm -hmm. I think I canceled her because of her apology. Mm -hmm. and, and along with the issue with the Yara she mm -hmm. uh, statement that she had made on the panel. So with those two things combined, I'm kind of putting this characterization of who she is in my head and I'm like, okay, she's a little too comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, just, it's gotten repetitive. Yeah. You know, so it's like, mm, yeah, she's canceled. For example, okay, so now, what about the situation where you cancel someone? Like, okay, who deserves to stay canceled? Like, in my eyes, R. Kelly deserves to stay canceled. Okay, so what level of cancel are we canceling R. Kelly? Like, I, like, there, if I see a song in my iTunes that has any type of credit to R. Kelly, you're I, done. I remove it. You're done. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a little bit harder. And... I have so many reasons. I mean, we, we don't know anything just as a public. I think as a as a public and as a society, we also need to keep that in mind that everything is objective. Everything is subjective. We don't know everything, right? That being said, does the man have an issue? Absolutely. Is something wrong with him? Absolutely. The empath in me naturally wants to say, okay, but he's also a victim of whatever he went through throughout his childhood. And there's just something wrong with him. He has an ailment. Is he a genius, a musical genius that I appreciate and I've grown up on and I've seen him live and there's just so many memories pertaining to his particular music that I'm fond of? Yes. Do I skip his song when it comes on? If it's a really banging art kind of song that I love from like 1990 something, I can't say I will. Will I go support him and watch his shows? No. Am I going to go watch him in concert? No. And if somebody else skips him, I'm not going to be like, uh uh, turn that back. But on an artist standpoint, he's like one of the greatest. And then it could be argued Elvis. People love to talk about Elvis. Elvis was a dog. He was a dog and he was with a young little girl. Like how long do we cancel someone? Is there such like what if different? like what if there's someone who legit made a genuine mistake and you know they didn't realize what they were saying or who they might have offended, you know? When when is the apology accepted? You know, because we can be bad for a little while. I, I'm, I'm all cool with being mad. So that when, brings me to the Gina Rodriguez point. Mm -hmm. 
her apology to me did not seem genuine. It was kind of like, well, I apologize if you were offended. Mm -hmm. You know, I apologize because it was a song that I grew up on. I love Lauryn Hill and the Fuji. So do we, <laughs> you know, like we mm -hmm. all do. But people know that you can't do that. And it's not the fact that she just did it and somebody caught her on camera doing it. <laughs> she <laughs> recorded it herself and posted it. Mm -hmm. What could someone do to turn that around? I mean, to have a, 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 a sincere apology, have a sincere conversation, um, maybe go to a leader and within the culture. I think it, when when this happens, like there needs to be um, there needs to be some action. Yes. It can it can't just be an apology. Yeah. Not when you're a public figure. Mm -hmm. um, and so there has to be some proactive move that you make that says that that shows the public that you've acknowledged you've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you do have to apologize, but like, it's like that won't that won't cut it. Like, it has to. You have to acknowledge that you've made a mistake, and you have to make a stride or an effort to show people who might have thought a similar way why you were wrong and how they could do better. At R. Kelly, on that interview with Gail, said, "You know, I'm sorry. I'm a sick person. And, you know, I know that." I'm wrong, I want to feel better, I want to do better, and maybe had he gone and participated in sort of some sort of outreach program for people who are victims of sexual violence and sexual abuse, are you saying maybe then R. Kelly could be uncancelled, but the fact that he's in so much denial, 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 I'm innocent, I didn't do a y'all trip, and the rest of the world is crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think, I think taking ownership, taking ownership alleviates Mm -hmm. some pressure off yourself mm -hmm. and um, taking ownership also shows that there is potential to change. Yeah, I mean, in the same thing you said on an interpersonal level, you mm -hmm. know, if you do something to a friend or a colleague or say something to the wrong person, genuinely, you know, regardless if you think you've done it or not, you would feel some sort of remorse mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know, I, I recognize where you had an issue with this. How can you move forward? How can I, what can I do to not allow this situation to happen again? You know, that's just on the interpersonal. I lost a couple of friends that same way. Yeah. Where the whole crew, and if y'all follow me, like y'all know how I roll, like I got a squad yeah. and, <laughs> you know, we, there's been a couple of instances where we, as a crew collective, have canceled one or two because Okay, One person cancel. decided not to take ownership. You know, there's more to be said, but I'm going to be more conscientious of what I say and what, you know, a lot of things, if, if there's something that is on my mind and I feel it may be controversial, I try to leave it as an open mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. Just so that I can, you know, be a platform to receive feedback in case my thoughts are not necessarily, you know, the thoughts of others. Yeah. So I think keeping that in mind is, is also good. But if you're on a pedestal and you're a celebrity, you have to young people that look up to you, you have to be more conscientious. Yeah. You have to be careful yeah. and take ownership from what you say because some little other little Gina Rodriguez might say the wrong thing around the wrong little shriek <laughs> yeah. out on the playground yeah. and then things go bad. Yeah. So let's be mindful of that. And also I think uh, educate yourself and pay attention. I know me, I open Twitter every morning and so I'm, I'm always wondering, like I have a like, three regular questions that I always ask myself. Okay, who are we mad at today? <laughs> What's the most controversial tweet that I'm gonna read? And who liking some nasty things on Twitter? Cause mm. I know Twitter at the dark beat. Mm. Oh, really? But that's a different episode. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, I always look at it, I'm like, okay, so who's canceled today? And I literally ask myself this every day that I'm on Twitter. And when I do see something that's going on, oh, okay, so so-and-so is trending. All right, let me sit back, review the tweets. I'm going to go to the sub-tweets, look at this, look at that, do some research and review research. before I even con comment because I might be jumping up the gun on the first tweet or the first headline I read without knowing all the facts. And then you could be canceled. Right, and I don't, I don't want that to happen either. I want to know, fully be engaged in the conversation right. if, I'm, if I choose to engage right. in that conversation and know what I'm talking about. That's very responsible. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, you know, we can talk about cancel culture all day, <laughs> but let us know. Tweet us. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Hop on our Facebook, comment. Um, I'm on my Twitter. 
But what we have Which Twitter. We have Twitter. <laughs> Follow our Twitter. Yes, yes. yes and our Instagrams. Make yes. sure you are subscribing. Again, we know it's the holiday time. Just to have it on a more upbeat tune. The holidays are also a very sensitive topic to a lot of people. So make sure yeah. you're being respectful. Make sure that you're opening up and being prepared for conversation rather than just, you know, opposing your opinions yeah. and your beliefs on others. So. And don't cancel someone because they might not celebrate the same holidays Thank you do. Thank you. Or if they choose not to celebrate holidays at all, there are people that do that as well. And by all means, they deserve just as much respect as you want on your holidays with your family. Preach. So okay. yes. Well, thank you for tuning in. We love you all. Thank you for shining your light with us. Happy holidays once again. Be sure to write in your thankful journals every morning. Check back in with us at the top of the year. We're going to be talking about a new year and yep. a new thankfulness and new gratitude. Yep. So peace out, you guys. Peace out. Love you. Hello, I'm Manny J. Style, founder and creative director of Thread House, a vertically integrated fashion-based company here in Los Angeles. And we're kicking off our crowdfunding campaign called 100 Caps. I've been everywhere in fashion, from designing bow ties to selling hand-painted shirts in the subway to owning and operating the first men's style house in Los Angeles, the gents closet. Now my mission is to address the world. One of the first causes that we're addressing is how to reduce our carbon footprint in the fashion industry. Thread House does that by using recycled materials from our own personal wardrobe and also donated damaged goods. Fast fashion has created a huge carbon footprint and we want to inspire our community to be a part of the change.